Hello and welcome. In this video, we are taking a look at machine learning on financial data, starting with the linear regression. I've already covered a logistic regression some months ago, and it's also recommended to check out my video on multiple linear regression. Both videos are linked in the description. Please note the following remarks. This video is a hands-on tutorial with no conceptual explanations, and very important in general, linear regression is not a good idea to predict stock prices. So you should see this video as a basic example. Anyhow, this video is the foundation of potential other, for example, classification algorithms. If you're interested in that, drop the video a like. Thank you very much in advance. Besides that, there are some simplifying assumptions you should be aware of here. The model we are building is, as said, a regression model, which is taking the prior and day returns to predict the future return. If the predicted return is positive, the asset will be hold. If the predicted return is negative, the asset is assumed to be shorted. As a disclaimer, concepts shown in this video are not an investment advice. Alright, so let's get started. We need Y Finance to get asset prices from the internet and we need NumPy for calculation purposes. First of all, let's just pull some data and I'm just taking the S&P 500 here. And we are starting in the beginning of 2010 and we are going until today. Right, and with that we are getting this known data frame. And the very first step is to calculate log returns. So I'm adding a column to this data frame. Returns, use the log function from NumPy and provide the close column and take the percentage change of that and add a one to that. Log returns calculated. Now we wanna calculate the lag returns. So the returns of the prior end days. I'm using a function for that, which I'm just calling lagit, which is taking a data frame as an argument, and the lags I wanna go back, or the days I wanna go back, which I'm calling lags here. So I'm simply looping for i in range, one to lags plus one, and then I'm creating a new column here, which name is lag plus the element in the iteration. So in the very first iteration, it would be lag one, second, lag two, and so on. And this should be my returns shifted by one row. Makes sense, right? So in the very first iteration, I'm shifting by one, second, I'm shifting by two, and so on. What I also wanna add inside this function is the name of the lag. I just need it later when I'm fitting the model because if I'm changing the lags here, I want to get a feedback uh, which lags do I have here, right? Because I have to provide the feature names and this is just, just for convenience. Therefore, I'm just creating a list here um, and add the name of the lag to the list. So I'm just taking lag plus the uh, element in the iteration. Okay, and finally, I'm returning names here. So what is happening uh, when I'm calling this function? Uh, first of all, my data frame, which I'm providing, is getting manipulated and is getting lags added to it as columns. And I'm also getting the names of the lags here. So if I want to call it properly, I can just uh, define a variable here, lag names, and taking lag it provide our data frame, which you just saw. And let's start with five legs. All right. So with that, in this variable, I just have the names, which are my feature names here, my uh, independent variables. And uh, besides that, my data frame has been manipulated. So you will see that I have legs one to five here. And again, so this is the return on, on this specific day and this is the lag return, right? So on this day, I have the return of the prior day here. So this is the two days lag return, I have it here and so on, right? Okay. As you saw, we got some NAN values. We need to drop them with this line. And now we can start to build our model. We are using sklearn to do that. So we are taking a linear model here. 
and we are importing the linear regression. After that, we are defining our model by instantiating linear regression here. And now we can fit the model. And we are just fitting that to our data frame and provide the feature names, which are stored in lag names. So this is the convenience I was talking of. Okay, and our depend variable is our returns column, right? With that, we have fitted our model and now we can make predictions. So I'm just adding that as, a, as an additional column here. So I'm just calling that prediction linear regression, use the model and predict um, and have to provide the features now or the independent variables, which are again, the lag names. All right. So with that, let's take a quick look. We are getting a prediction column, which is containing the value predicted by the linear regression on this particular day. So how can we work with that? Um, if this prediction value is larger than zero, we want to buy the asset. If that's smaller than zero, we want to short sell it, right? Therefore, we are creating a direction column, direction linear regression. And we're just using a list comprehension here and say one, if i is larger than zero and else minus one for i in df prediction lr, right? And with that, we are just getting a one if the predicted value is larger than zero and a minus one if the predicted value is smaller than zero. So the return of our strategy would be, we're adding that strategy linear regression. We are just multiplying this column with the return column. So direction LR times the returns column. Okay, and now we can take a look at how the strategy would have performed by taking the counter function of the uh, log function, the XP function, as we were working with log returns here. And now we are just providing both the returns. So this is just the return of the asset, in our case, the S&P 500 in general, and also the return of our strategy using the linear regression. And to get the final uh, return uh, over, over 10 years, so starting uh, somewhere, in, or not some at uh, 2010, we would get this yeah insane outperformance here of the linear regression strategy, right? So if we wanna plot that, we just have to take the cumulative sum to get a time series here, and then we are plotting that. And you see this chart here, right? Now, what is the problem with that? We have, so let's take a look again. We have fitted the model on the whole data set, right? We didn't split here or anything. So we have a clear case of overfitting here. So th these won't be the realistic trading results. To get a more realistic view, we have to split um, the data set into a training and a test data set. So we are fitting the model on the train data set and we're testing the model on the test data set. All right. And as you see, this is, yeah, ha hardly believable. So we are doing the train test split within this video and see uh, how this is changing the results. So if we're taking model selection here uh, and we are importing train test split, so this is just included in the sklearn library, which is performing uh, a training and testing data set split here. And now we are defining train tests as, then we are calling this, provide our data frame, set shuffle to false. Why shuffle to false? Because um, I don't wanna mess up the da data points, right? So I, I just wanna split it in I want to have data, I, I don't know, before 2018 as the, the training data and data after 2018 as the testing data. 
If I'm shuffling here, so if I'm setting that to true or leave it out because the default argument is true, um, I would just, yeah, shuffle around the data. So I would train the data not on a, on a, on a time series, but it could even contain dates uh, which are within the testing period, right? Which is not overly problematic, but we are not doing that here for now. So we are defining a test size and there is there are rules of thumbs. What you can use, I'm using a 30% test size here. As the data set is relatively small. What I'm also doing is to define a random state as just a number, I'm taking zero here. The only reason for that is that the train test split is replicable. You know, so the data is being splitted, right? Randomly. And to make the same train test split again, you have to define a random state. Otherwise you won't be able to replicate it again. Okay. Perfect. Now I'm doing something what you don't necessarily have to do. I'm creating copies here to avoid some annoying um, warning messages. And now I'm fitting the model. So let's uh, instantiate that again, linear regression. I'm fitting that to the trading data set. Let's take a look at that. So train is from the beginning of 2010 until somewhere in mid of March. You see 2000 rows here. And the testing data set is from yeah, mid of March again until today. All right. Okay, now let's fit the model to our training data set. So we're just providing train and then the leg names as the features and train the returns as the dependent variable, right? And now we are basically just uh, repeating the, the steps from before. So of course the code is improvable here so that you're using a function so that you don't have to do all this writing stuff again. So, oh, sorry model.predict and then tests and leg names. Okay, so we are just predicting the trained model on the training data. Um, we are predicting the testing data here. All right, so now the direction thing again. Direction. Uh, one if i is larger than zero else minus one for i in test prediction lr hope you can see that okay and finally same as before the strategies return would be the direction column times the return column here times the returns. So let's take a look. Returns and and you see still the linear regression strategy is outperforming the asset. Now you have to understand that the time horizon is much shorter now, right? So you cannot really compare these numbers. So as you just saw, testing is just from 2018 until 2021. Uh, yet we have a we have a profit here, um, which seems nice. So let's first of all plot that. This is the strategy return. This is the return of the S&P from 2018 until today. But, and this is the point, but we have to find out how many trades we needed to achieve this performance here, right? So this, I don't know, 30% more performance here. And to get the number of trades, mm, 
we can just check. So I'm, I'm showing you. We can just check this column here, this direction column. And we are just checking when this, so the difference between those values, when this is something else than zero, then we have to make a trade, right? So we have a minus one here, meaning we have shorted the asset. On next day, we are buying the asset. So this is a transaction, again, a transaction. But if we are taking the difference of those two, we are getting a zero here. So we don't have to get any transaction cost because we already bought the asset and we can ju just hold it, right? So we are only getting a transaction when these two values uh, difference is other than zero. All right. Okay, so the number of trades. So as said, we are taking a look at the direction LR column, then apply a diff function to get the difference between two rows. So the row you're in minus the subsequent row. And we are taking a look at all values which are not equal to zero. And then we can take a look at value counts or some doesn't really matter. So we have to take a look at the true values and you would need to make 432 trades to achieve a performance like this, right? So let's play a bit around with that finally to end this video. So we could take two legs here and uh, let's actually take a look at another asset. Maybe this is interesting, but you can do it for yourself, of course. So let's take a look at the shorter time horizon. Um, yeah, might, uh, might be a bit too short. So Apple 2018, leg it with two legs, drop it, and then skip this part. Just want to take a look at the uh, actual performance, not actual, but the performance with the train test split here. And now you see that the linear regression strategy is even worse performing, right? With 131 trades here, right? To visualize that. So yeah, last but not least, Maybe Bitcoin. Bitcoin US dollar. Oh, let's take five lakhs. Skip this part. And you see bad performance here, right? Yeah, so. Last but not least, thank you very much for watching. Um, as I said, just an application. Don't take it too serious. Uh, play a bit around with that with different time horizons. With different uh, test training splits can also make a big difference. And yeah, I hope this was informative or interesting for you. And if you're interested in topics like this, leave the video a like. Thank you very much in advance. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. Looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos. Bye bye.